hopefully this recording will work this time. I'm Heather Rafa with Renegade Upcycled Goods. I use my phone to record and I just had a phone call interrupting my last thing, my last attempt. But this is the last lamp that I made and it's finished baking in the oven now. And um, later I'll be getting to how to make different kinds of lamps um, with lamp kits and being a little creative to make nightlight on the inside. But that will be for a later video. This is going to be the fourth lamp jug, cider jug I'm making in a row. This one is going to be for me with the same colors in the lamp base that I just showed you. That one's my, for my husband's side of the bed and this is for my side of the bed. So the same colors but a different design. It's going to be a little bit experimental because I'm not really sure how this is going to work. I want to put a thin coat of this uh, turquoise. It's PBO Porcelain 150 again uh, in turquoise and I want to line the inside of the jug with this paint so I can get a nice thin coating. Now they do sell a thinner that you can mix with your paint that I could have probably bought and then made it sort of drip down the outside like I did with that um, red lamp that I made, which I did not make a video about. But the idea is starting at the top and having a control drip. You have to keep painting around and around and around, just continually spinning it um, and adding paint to the wet edge, having a control drip all the way down. And it gives you a nice smooth coat. I'll show you that. That's what I got here. Um, this is for a friend who commissioned this. And it's a pretty smooth coat, although it does have some air bubbles on the outside. And this has also already been baked in the oven. And this was the, um, I believe it was scarlet red. Um, but I wanna try something a little different I think it would give me some really good results if it works. Um, however, I don't have the PBO thinner for this paint. So I'm gonna try to make a thin coat of this by pouring it along the inside and trying to control the drip on the way down. And I don't want it streaky. I want a very smooth, uh, brushless look for this. Um, and if I can't get it to work, then um, with the paint the way it is because it's so thick I'm gonna try adding a little rubbing alcohol so we'll see hopefully it will go well um, so I had tried to do this once already with let me show you this was a sort of a test um, to try to coat the inside of the glass with paint and I wasn't trying to thin it out in this test uh, and I had trouble getting the bottle to dry. I had washed it and tried to dry it with some water and then I filled it with alcohol, a little alcohol and shaken it around and tried to dry that and even the alcohol wasn't really evaporating out of the bottle because of the tight neck. I discovered that I really had to put something inside the bottle to dry it out with. And that's what I end up doing for all these other bottles. Um, but the alcohol thinned this out and it gave a real smooth, very light coat to the inside. I don't want it that light. And you can see it's all drippy because I didn't put that much paint in there. It's just a little at the top. And what was in there dripped down and then it dripped all the way to the bottom and left a, a dark ring on the bottom. So I, this isn't quite what I want my results to be, but that's my first trial with something like that. So I think this is all of this that I have. If this doesn't work, I have to um, wash out the jug of cider that we're drinking now when I get, when we get done drinking it and start over again. Um, and I would have to order some more paint. And these are, I think they were between six and eight dollars a piece for what is that, A? I'm sorry, I'm blind. Uh, 45 milliliter little container. And, and a little goes a long way. 
but let's try this experiment. Maybe just pour some in, or a lot. Ooh, look, it kind of fits on there just right, doesn't it? And then if I, I've already cleaned the inside of this and rinsed it with alcohol, so the paint should stick. I think I have to start by taking this off first. So I guess we'll find out together how well this works. So I got it on the bottom. Letting it slide to one side. And then rolling it. I hope it's going to be enough paint. That's probably the biggest concern. I already used a lot of this paint. And um, there might not be enough to make this work. especially without thin, thinning it out, although I don't really want it this thick, I don't think. So I might have to pour some alcohol in there. Try to thin it out and see, just see how well it works. Yeah, it's not going very far. It's like, hmm. I do know that it'll stay wet for a long time inside this jar. It's going to take more than 24 hours to dry, that's for sure. Um, normally you paint the PBO on the outside of your jar uh, and then you let it dry for about 24 hours and then you bake it in the oven. But considering that the alcohol and water weren't drying, uh, within even two days. Um, I tip them upside down uh, on a rack so that they could drain and dry and the humidity, they, they dripped out, you know, because they were upside down on the rack, but they stayed really humid inside and the humidity, the moisture collected in the bottom because it was then the top um, and it, it didn't come out. So I am afraid that I'm going to have to try something to thin that out. That's really, really thick on there. Crossing my fingers. I'm going to put a little rubbing alcohol inside. Just a little. Now this probably would have worked a lot better if I had mixed the rubbing alcohol in with the paint to begin with. Instead of doing it this way. Yeah, so some of it's staying really thick, and some of it, some of it is very, very watery, mixed with the rubbing alcohol. Mm. So, yeah, you can see the really runny stuff there. That's a little closer to what I want, but that's too thin. And this other stuff is too thick. So I'm going to have to maybe pour a little more rubbing alcohol in and try to get a long paintbrush and... Try to scrape it down and stir it around. Let's see. Oh, this paintbrush is not quite long enough. Of course, now I'm getting all sorts of streaks and marks on the glass. Like I said, it's an experiment. I'm just seeing what's happening. The way a lot of my projects are. I just try things out and see if they work and if they don't work, see if I can fiddle with it until it does work or something like that. And we'll sometimes sometimes you find out well, let's just drop it. <laughs> Start over. Well, let's see. Well, let's sort of mix together. A little bit. I wish I could get that stuff off. 
Okay. Now I'm messy. Okay. This stuff is still pretty thick up here. It'd be nice to water that down or get it mixed with the alcohol so that that's not all drippy. One thing about working on the inside of the jar is that, like I said, it doesn't dry very quickly inside there. And so I've got a little more time to work with it. And another thing that I'm hoping to achieve is it's going to be really smooth and shiny because you're seeing the glass instead of seeing the paint when you look at it. The surface that you're looking at is the glass. So hopefully it'll be a little less textural with um, the air bubbles and things like that. And it certainly will be uh, as far as painting my next layers on because this isn't going to stay solid blue. This is the background for the other uh, paints. The rest of the paints are going to be painted on the outside. And since I'm doing it this way, if there are air bubbles, and I do see them right now, they won't create an actual texture on the outside of the glass where I'll be painting. So any air bubbles won't be in the way of what I'm doing. You might be able to see them in the finished project, but um, they won't interfere when with my detailed painting that I'm trying to put on here. So that's going around fairly well now. I'm not sure how alcohol is going to affect the permanency of the paint when it's done being dried and baked. I used alcohol instead of water because alcohol evaporates more quickly than water. So that I'm hoping it will not take as long to dry as it would if I had used water, which already is a pretty long drying time inside the jug. I may find that I need to use a blow dryer or something like that, but I want to be careful about uh, applying heat or too much wind to this because it could cause shrinkage issues, um, could cause rippling um, and distortion if parts of it dry faster than other parts. So I don't want to just, as soon as I'm done painting it, just suddenly start um, blowing hot air from a hair dryer in here. Now this is the this is the tricky part because I'm trying to get the paint into the neck of the bottle. You've got different angles that you're dealing with. I don't want to just let it all drip out because I want to finish coating the entire inside. Sometimes you can tap it and help it move along, especially when the paint is thicker. There needs to be some more paint in this area down here. And so pretty much everything needs to be coated except for this very top part. Okay. Just finish kind of rotating it. Gotta go a little back and forth because there's some collected in the neck. I need it to come drip down and coat here. Things 
side. So, sorry, this part is getting a little bit tedious, I'm sure, to, to watch. And knowing my video camera on my phone, it could stop recording at any moment, so I'll apologize in advance if it just cuts off in mid-sentence or something. Eventually, I will fix my computer and actually have video editing software and then I can take actual proper videos and maybe I'll even have intros and everything. So this is almost finished being coated. I'm going to fiddle with it a little bit more. Just letting it all kind of collect in one spot and then tip it into that spot that needs the paint. But you probably don't want to watch any more of this because it's getting so tedious and slow. So you get to see it in the next um, part when I'm doing additional decoration on this. Thanks.